Well, a familiar face to many of you back home, of course. It is Charlie Appleby, Godolphin's number one trainer. And Charlie, while I know that you're going to bat this straight back at me with a, with a straight face, um, you come here arguably as the world's number one horse race trainer. I mean, it's, it's been an incredible year. It has been a fantastic year, thanks. Uh, yeah, look, it's all down to the team at home. They've done a great job, even just, you know, travelling horses here. It's all very well bringing, you know, potentially some nice horses here. But if they don't travel well and, you know, do everything that they need to do on, on flight and, and arriving here, then it's, it's always going to be hard. But the uh, team are doing a fantastic job, as always. And uh, yeah, on the back of the year that we've had, if we can, if we can pinch a winner this weekend, it will uh, be the cherry on the top. What I love about your response there was that you didn't actually do what I said, which was sort of laugh it off and say, don't be so <laughs> stupid. Like, it is easy to argue that you are the best trainer of a racehorse currently on this planet. I don't know it is, that. isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you can, I can argue it. If you, do you want me to argue it? No, no, no I, won't, I, won't, I don't argue. I only discuss things. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's been look, a hell of a year. Yeah, it's been a hell of a year. And, and statistically, that's what it is. I mean, they, uh, the stats are there. So um, we can't argue with the stats. Uh, it's black and white. And uh, like I say, it's been a, a fantastic year. Uh, it's been good for racing, been good for myself and the team at Moulton Pallets, and, and, and more importantly, good for his iron shape and, and Godolphin. I think it's easy to forget that the reason Godolphin was put together, really, was to be a world force. The international stage was everything. So while you have been fantastic in the UK and Ireland, and indeed on the world stage. The Breeders' Cup is the world championship. So for you to have a winner here would be massive. For sure. Yeah, no, it's what it's all about. I mean, as we all know, we go through the year. We, we, you know, we always call the you know, Royal Ascot our Olympics there uh, for, for the UK. And then, and then, you know, we then come on to Champions Day um, at Ascot. Uh, and then the, the bandwagon rolls on to here. And so, yeah, you're, this is... You're very unique in that we are, as you quite rightly say, taking on worldwide competition, you know, taking on the Americans, taking on the best of the Europeans, taking on Japan. Um, so, you know, it's the best horses, the best trainers, best jockeys, best owners. It's a, it's a fantastic event to be part of. Best broadcasters? For sure. But I, I didn't have to just... You know, I didn't have to say that. Uh, uh, let's, start <laughs> let's, let's start with our Baja in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. Now, you can win Breeders' Cup races with brilliance, but you can also win Breeders' Cup races with toughness and experience. And with him, is it fair to put him in that latter category? You're, you're very right in, in saying that. In, in, I feel this horse has the same sort of credentials as, as Line of Duty coming into it. You know, he might not be the best horse in the race, um, but what he would do is he brings the experience of obviously having travelled to Woodbine, um, and if he's in the middle of them getting hustled about there, you've got an experienced jockey and, 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 a, and a willing horse. Yeah. Mind you, Albaha hasn't got a TV show named after him, but well done to, to Line of Duty. Modern Games is, is, for me, slightly the opposite. He's the one who might have that brilliance. Yes, as you said there, he's, he, he comes into the race on, on, with, a, with a lovely profile, winning the, the Somerville Stakes there on his last start. Um, he's progressed with each run. He travels for fun. He, you know, they've both got nice draws, um, but at the end of the day, you've got to make the most of them. You've got to be able to hit the lids and be able to get up there and be able to travel away. But he will travel. Um, there's no doubt about it. And if the gaps come um, and they swing off that last turn, uh, I think he's got, as you quite rightly say, a little bit more class than the others in, in Albar, should I say, that he's got acceleration. Whereas Albar, he'd be doing he'd be doing his best work down the lane, but he'd be weaving his way in and out, in, in, in around them and hopefully finding a, finding a run. Space Blues and Master of the Seas in the Breeders' Cup mile on the turf. Um, Space Blues, I'm, I, he's a favourite. I've got to say, I, I want to take on because his best form's at seven and I think he likes a bit of juice. Now he's going a mile on firm ground and when you're dealing with a favourite, I've got two reasons straight away why I want to take him on. Am I wrong to think like that? Personally, I think, yes. In, in the, he, you know, he won a mile as a maiden there. I mean, there was a maiden, so it's a different ball game altogether compared to what we're going to be facing on Saturday uh, in soft ground. Yes, you're right about the ground, but he won round, uh, he won round um, Saudi there on quick ground. Um, he's got form uh, in Morris de Geese there on, on quick ground as well. So um, does it bring out the best in him on soft ground? I think it just gives him more of an advantage because the others can't handle it. But as a, as, a, as a horse himself, I think he's versatile. Um, he'll go on this ground. It's a lovely cushion. It's, 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 it's quick, but it, it's a sponge. Um, so I, I won't be using the ground as an excuse on Saturday. And the brilliant win in the forum, I mean, that was spectacular. You could argue easily that he's coming here in the form of his life. He's never been better. No doubt about it. Uh, he's gone out the track this morning. He's, he's a true professional. Um, but um, like I say, his, his, his profile coming into race, you can't, it's faultless. Uh, he will travel, as we all know, he'll be one of the last to come off the bridle. Um, and, um, you know, if he, gets the, if he gets the gaps, he'll be, uh, he'll be hitting the line strong.
And I'm kind of thinking Master of the Seas will be a similar type of ride. Um, I mean, if he was coming here after his Guineas run, he'd be right in the mix. The problem is we know a little bit more about him now and we're not absolutely sure how good he is. Is, is that fair? Yeah, look, as we know, after the Guineas, he, you know, he, he won the Craven and then he went and finished second in the Guineas, both on quick ground. Um, unfortunately, we met with a setback after the Guineas, had the summer off there. I was pleased with his comeback there in the Joel um, and toyed on whether to give him another run or come straight here on the back of it because we were purposely working back from a British Cup mile with him. Um, but he showed his wellness after the Joel and, and so therefore I just wanted to give him one more run there. Uh, so he went to uh, Champions Day. Uh, in the QE2 there and, and um, travelled but the ground was too soft for him he was never going to you know, do anything once William he just said as soon as I let his head down he just sunk so uh, but most importantly he got another run under him to, on Saturday like I say he's got a nice draw they're going to go hopefully going to go hard and that will suit him um, if he brings back that Guinness form well of course yeah I mean, at the end of the day he, 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 he'll take all the beating for me um, an exciting horse that I think is sort of come on, he's going to come in under the radar slightly the Breeders' Cup turf is, is really just shows the power of Appleby, I feel. Shake Mohammed, when he's thinking about Christmas presents, he'll be thinking, you know, Charlie, the power of Appleby in the mile and a half division. Because you could have had Adi or Hurricane Lane here, possibly, although the ground might have been too fast for them, but you could have had them here. And yet you've got two horses who have real chances that aren't either of those two. That means you've got four in your stable like that. Waltham Street, Canadian international winner. Uh, for me, the question with, with both of them in some ways, your beer and Waltham Street, is are they just quite fast enough? Um, what's your feeling? Um, as you say, Walton Street, um, he comes here in great order. Um, look, he's, he's not getting any younger, um, but he brings a wealth of experience. He's very straight. Oh, is he seven? Seven, seven, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, he progressed last winter in Dubai, uh, came out, and he's come and finished third in, in what looked at, what now looks at a very good German uh, Group 1 there. And, and obviously the second horse coming out and winning the arc and, and the third uh, going on to win again. Uh, or the winner, should I say, going on to win again. So uh, Woodbine, uh, it, was, it was a routine piece of work for him, really, to be honest. Um, is he fast enough? There isn't, it doesn't look as though there's natural pace there at the moment. So he has got the pace to be able to get up there. Um, and, and if he gets up there and gets into a nice rhythm, look, he's not... He's not You're almost enough. thinking uncontested lead. Yes, but I like say he's not, as you quite rightly say, he's not good enough to win one. I mean, if the favourite turns up, I mean, she's got to not turn up with a Ray game for any of us to, to beat her. Tanawa. Yeah, Tanawa, sorry. Um, and uh, so that, that's Walton Street and your beer. He comes in here with, like I say, some fantastic three roll form. Um, he's been a character, as we all know. Um, you know, Gelded comes out, wins the Bahrain trophy. Then all of a sudden, the old your beer comes back again uh, at Goodwood and sort of half runs away with William. Um, then we leave the hood on in the Great Vulture, he goes and wins a Great Vulture and then he goes and puts up a good performance there in, uh, in the Belmont Derby as well. So um, yeah, he's the young pretender, his run style will be suited around here, it doesn't matter which, which sort of a gallop they go, if they go a good gallop he'll be dropped in, if they go steady he'll drop in anyway and he's got the acceleration, he showed that uh, like I say in America on his last start. So um, two horses, that, it's quite nice to go into a race like that on Saturday, that, you know, the pressure's not on us, you know, we're third or fourth in the betting with them and both I think have got live each way chances and just finally with your beer is it fair to say that in May if I'd asked a number of your team the best mile and a half prospect it might have been your beer over Adia and Hurricane Lane at that time like, it appeared your beer was the number one mind you it appeared one ruler was the was the guineas hope once but you know what I mean yeah, it's no, like it's amazing sure, how yeah. things change yeah. no for sure and, and he was there's no doubt about him I mean you know what he did as a two-year-old he brought the best two-year-old form out of that mile and a half division going into uh, mm into the three-year-old career and, and in the spring there was no doubt about it he was he was up there and, and, and mixing it with well not mixing he we actually put him in front of uh, Hurricane Lane and uh, Adiar but um, if he brings that any of that form from Europe on Saturday I think he's I think he's like I say he's a, he's a live player so if Cox Brown Baffert even Mott Pletcher are watching on and they're thinking, geez, there's the number one train on planet Earth. Which is, <laughs> which is the number one hope of the number one train? If you had to just have, if you only allow one runner out of all your team, which one would you stick with? Space Blues.